Everybody, welcome to Snow Talk. Way 3D's meteorologist Brian Good here. And uh, we're going to start off with something a little different before we get into the details on the forecast. I love this graphic from Brian. Uh, he's really good with the climatology stuff as of late that he's been putting out uh, across the country. But this map he sent out I thought was fascinating. When you look at the dates of when we would normally see our first measurable snow, here in Louisville it's roughly around the 16th of November we would see that. And notice the trend over the past few decades compared to, let's say you take a 40 year period of 1938 to 1977 and you take a 40 year period from 78 until about now. And you look to see what has happened to that average first date of snow, say November 16th. What has happened to that date? Well, comparing the previous 40 year period in Kentucky, as you can see there, we're about more than 12 days now. Plus, uh, it's being pushed back. And I, I'm not the only one, of course, that's noticed that a lot of you have. A lot of things in the season seem to have been delayed as of late. We have delayed cold, and it seems like at times winter takes a while to arrive in the fall season. The summer seems to be, to be delayed. Sometimes the hottest weather ends up being closer to September at times. Uh, longest stretch of hot weather was indeed in September. And when you look at uh, the cold weather, it takes a while for spring to arrive in the uh, May, April, May period. So. There has been a noticeable delay, but just looking at the first date of snow, that's an interesting stat to work with, and there has been certainly a change in Kentucky into Tennessee, which I thought was really interesting stuff to look at, and there's a lot more stuff you can pull from that, I'm sure, but that's just an early snapshot. So uh, the average date now, uh, we are now the zone of December 16th to the 31st is uh, the average trend we have been in since uh, this previous uh, period here. So but that's kind of cool. To, uh, to see that there. Nothing too alarming, but uh, that's been certainly the trend for us the past several years. We will look at the snowboard. It's a sad looking snowboard. I don't have anything of any consequence. And this early in the season, that's to be expected. Uh, we may have a look like this all the way through December, perhaps in January. Who knows? Uh, you guys know how this works, uh, but the snowboard will be updated every single day. I'm always going to have my eye out just to see what is coming our way potentially. And today, I don't see any, con any significance uh, that is showing up. Now, when you look at the model, which I'm about to show you, you'll see why we have some things to discuss here. Here is the uh, forecast snowfall over the next 14 days. This is from the Euro. Notice it's given some snowfall across southern areas of Indiana into Cincinnati. When you look at the wider scope, it's more of an impact for the Appalachians and also for the Rockies again, northern Rockies and northern plains to be expected. That's that bad news, guys, for a snow lover. You really want to build this up, as I mentioned during the... Uh, the blog yesterday, you want to really try to build this up as much as you can to force that storm track more and more to the south. It's got a limit because we're going to see a southeast ridge develop this year, so that's why we're thinking a battle zone for us when we drew that map for the winter forecast, as we're going to get the crunch of the storm track trying to get pushed south, but it's going to be up against the, the ridge off the uh, western Atlantic, so this is really going to make a complicated zone for us for the upcoming season. That's the players in the field that we've been looking at. But why is that snow there on the uh, Euro. Well, overall, the pattern is a zonal flow we're entering, which means it's a more east-west path of the upper level, upper level uh, winds, the jet stream. No big dips of cold air, no big surges of ridges of heat. But notice that little pocket of blue there. It's basically dynamic cooling, is what the Euro is sniffing out with a low pressure moving by in that very fast zonal flow. Again, the cold air is still being locked in here. Not all bad news either. You want to build that up for a while. But still, as long as we have uh, this low out here in the Aleutians uh, playing havoc here, we're seeing problems with the arrangement of the ridge here. At times, we will see this try to dig in, but uh, until it gets more inland, we need it to get more into the Rockies to get any type of ridging here for warmth to happen, or you want the other way around. You want the uh, this to go away and develop the ridge back over uh, the eastern Pacific and then get the troughs back into our neck of the woods. And uh, it's going to take some time for that to happen, it looks like. Let me show you, uh, first off, the setup right now, uh, because we'll get back to the uh, winter stuff in a second. I'll only cover the short range period where we do have some thunderstorms to track. It's warm outside now. We've uh, got a chance for some sprinkles today, but the warm front surged north. It's now northern areas of Indiana, but it's gonna come back down as a cold front tonight. So during the day today, we're fine. I think even with cloud cover, we'll make it over 70. Then tonight, here comes that front, moving in from the north, just in time for the morning commute. A band of showers and thunderstorms. We're not expecting severe weather, but some lightning and thunder certainly possible out of that. We will likely have our high point temperature-wise at midnight tonight because 
even though we may break out in some sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow, I'm not sure how long we will be under the clouds where we have a chance to warm up. So we will drop with the rain, and we're going to try to recover with the afternoon sun. It's hard to say yet with that north wind how much of recovery are we going to have. Are we get back up to 70 or not, or is 70 at midnight likely going to be roughly our high for the day? We'll figure that out. Not a big deal, but uh, overall, Friday afternoon and evening doesn't look to be in bad shape. But here's the thing. That front went south of us. It's going to come back north again on Saturday as a warm front. So once again, we warm things up. Uh, we're bringing in more moisture, so there is going to be a chance of showers, maybe some thunder as that warm front surges northbound. And then as we head into Sunday, this is where we enter the warm sector of the system. And the models are spitting out about 75 there, as you see on the screen. Uh, this is a classic setup of what we always say, the overachieving. you got a strong south flow, very strong south flow. Potential for sun breaks to develop. And the coverage of rainfall looks very spotty. So you put all that together, we will likely overachieve what the models say. Um, and this will put us in the range of closer to 80, which is the record already for that date. 1975 is not, uh, was 80 degrees. It could certainly match there. But as you all know, you get that warm. We then have to watch for the opposite effect of a cold front. Now, the issue is timing because the cold front is going to move in Sunday evening. Obviously, the earlier it gets here, the more of an impact when it comes to the severity of the thunderstorms we will have to worry about. The longer it waits to get here, the less impact we have to worry about. Having said that, there is still a tremendous amount of wind energy with the system. So even the small amount of heat energy involved in this, the thermal dynamics to it, even the small, smallest amount of it is going to be enough to at least create a potential for some cases of uh, damaging winds and a few of the stronger thunderstorm cells. And these look to be individual cells uh, that will likely form in one, if not two lines. And this does not look to be a squall line per se, but individual cells that will likely be super cells initially, which means a little more of a tornado potential with them. And that'll be found across northern areas of Indiana, northern Ohio, and perhaps even just west of Indianapolis. When they first start off as individual cells, I think that's where your trail threat is going to kick in in that area. We will likely get more of the straight line wind event with these stronger cells, but they will pass through during the overnight. Uh, and again, the models are varying the timing of when this will arrive, and we've got to nail that down. We're three days out, so we don't want to get too specific. Uh, I will say this, though. Even looking at the NAM, which is now able to see out that far, you can see that we're able to see the sky on Sunday afternoon turn partly cloudy, given credence to the idea of getting close to 80, and it will be windy, too. Uh, so very warm setup there. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center has the level two or slight risk all the way down to southern areas of Indiana for Sunday overnight. And uh, the enhanced level three in that zone again where the cells start off as individual cells are closer to the parent low, by the way, which is in the Great Lakes. So you're going to have more turning of the wind with height uh, closer to that low. So it makes sense where they've drew all that. We're just on the very edge of it all because of the timing issues with this. Um, when you look at the sounding, I know it's hard to read all this, but there is uh, instability in the Cape coming in at about 1,000, which is pretty good for November standards. Lifted index, all negative, so this is definitely a thunderstorm potential we're talking about. It indicates they will likely still be cellular at times as they pass through our neck of the woods. Uh, so not exactly a solid, straight line, squall line deal, all right? Individual cells, which means some people will be completely missed out of the thunderstorm action. Yes, it's given a marginal tornado mainly because of the cloud height. The bases of these clouds are very, very low, and there's some turning with the wind as you go up, but it's nothing extreme, but it's more that the cloud bases are so low that if they were to try to spin, it wouldn't have far to go. But i got to stress, I really think it's more of an issue just north of us uh, to worry about versus here locally. Um, we'll see how that plays out. It's just an early snapshot. we got a long way to go on that, but uh, we try to give you the release alert. All right, look at the GFS pattern. After that front moves on by Sunday night into Monday, then we enter that zonal flow, which means the front is stuck east-west. So here comes our next wave. It's going to ride right along that. So we don't get a break. Tuesday, Wednesday, parts of Thursday. Here comes some rain moving in. A cool rain at that because, again, we don't have – it's a zonal flow. We don't have big surges of warmth, but we also don't have big surges of cold. We're kind of just right there in the middle. And even as we head down the road, we try to cool down a bit for that weekend, but another system looks like it's going to roll in around the 11th or the 12th, according to the GFS. When you look at the Euro idea – uh, it has the front again, Sunday night, Monday. Then there's the zonal flow. Uh, but then watch, it brings this wave on by. But the thing is, it's going with a dynamic cooling event under the upper low. So it tries to show a change over a mix at about 5 a.m. on Thursday to something frozen. That's why it's been at that snow amount on that snow map you saw. 
and then it moves out, and then we try to warm back up before the next system moves in after that. So I wouldn't, too, I wouldn't worry about the snow potential. Dynamic cooling events this far out, we just can't get a good handle on until we get to 12 hours out in some cases. But you can see we're going to go even kill on the temperatures, 50s and 60s overall. All right, that's how it looks today, guys. Have a good one.